One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Good morning, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Hey guys, I'm James Hake of The Hake Report, and I read The Hake News on Jason Lee Peterson's top of the first and second and third hours. And now I'm on The Hake Report Live, 9 a.m. Friday, August 1st, 2nd, August 1st, I mistakenly put August 1st, 2nd, 2019. It is the second day of Men's History Month, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. We definitely need, <clears throat> we definitely need men to become like actual men, not... Not beta men, so it would be really nice if we did that. Um, I'm Jesse's lackey, lackey, <laughs> according to Earl from Michigan. Nice guy. I hope he calls in sometime. When people ask shallow questions and Jesse gives them like a deep, deeper response and then they continue with their shallow questions, I call them blind. And I did this with Skip because Skip tends, uh, Skip from uh, a, one of my one of my frequent callers, one of Jesse's frequent callers from Augusta, Georgia. He's into information and facts, and he doesn't realize that truth is different from facts and information. Truth is, is different. And so when I call them blind, he, um, he's like, so every, I have to believe, I have to agree with everything that Jesse says. Does that make me blind if I don't? And I said, yeah. <laughs> We were talking about whatever issue it was, not everything, but I went ahead and said yes. And I couldn't really think of anything that Jesse says that's important that uh, somebody who can see could disagree with. So it's kind of like when Trump tells the truth, he does tell the truth, that the media won't tell, that the Democrats and most of the Republicans will not tell. And it's like 99.9% of Republicans, it seems like, won't tell the truth either. And yet they'll nitpick on the factual things that he may get wrong sometimes. You know, you d dumb details that are really irrelevant to the point that he's making. So Jesse tells the truth the same way. Sometimes he'll get little piddly details wrong. You may know more about some issue than he does or whatever. But the big picture, he's correct and the big picture stuff is the important stuff so it's, it's kind of the same thing they're 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 telling the truth but they may not have all the facts but the facts are dumb facts some the facts that they don't have are not necessary for telling the truth so this is outrageous I have a CNN headline and uh, Joel showed it at the beginning of well it was a push notification on my phone that I got just at the end of the Jesse Lee Peterson show today, CNN reports an NYPD New York Police Department judge recommends that the officer involved in Eric Garner's death be fired, a source says. I hate judges. Eric Garner is the big guy who five years ago, July 17th, 2014, got put in a so-called chokehold and died and the reason that he died was he was overweight, out of shape, in no position to be resisting arrest because he had been resisting arrest. Um, the premise for the arrest may not have been right. I don't know if it was or not. But he had allegedly been involved in selling loose cigarettes, um, tax-free, you know, breaking the New York City law or whatever, the local laws, because they like to tax the heck out of cigarettes and so he was you know at one point selling those things and oh okay pardon me folks <laughs> so yeah uh, he was allegedly involved in that you know petty type of crime he had been a drug dealer at one point he was a father, married father of six, I think, something like that. In his 40s or 50s, I want to say. 
and he was actually known, according to NPR, I read, for breaking up fights to keep the heat off that that block. And he had just broken up a fight, allegedly, according according to some some uh, white reporter who goes on NPR, liberal. And he had broken up a fight, and so he was leaning against the wall with his hand, <sighs> catching his breath, because according to According to a report that I read, and I don't remember where I read it, maybe it was in the New York Times, he couldn't walk a block without having to stop and catch his breath. He had asthma, his heart was twice the size of a normal human being, almost 400 pounds, and so it was that point he was catching his breath after having broken up a fight to keep, and his point in breaking up these fights is to keep police attention out of the area, interestingly enough. So... Um, the police go up to him and accost him, supposedly, and he gets animated, gets upset that the police are harassing him. And then they like, okay, come on, come with us. They grab his hand. He's like, no! So he's like fighting them off when they're trying to cuff him. And he's like, this ends now. Well, it ended, it ended at that point. The guy goes up behind his back, Officer Daniel Pantaleo grabs him by the neck, takes him down, pins him, pins him on the ground for like, I don't know how long, and he says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, and he says that like 11 times, and are the officers, what are the officers supposed to do when you, when you do that? Is it a trick? What are they supposed to do? They take him to the hospital on the way to the hospital, allegedly, he um, suffers a heart attack according to the cops. And then he later is pronounced dead an hour later at the hospital. And so everybody's crying police brutality and racism and stuff like that. And five years later, at the Democratic debate uh, the other night in, in Detroit, black liberals, one black guy who works for um, Al Sharpton's National Action Network, a supposed reverend, and two women's march workers, Linda Sarsour, nasty woman, and um, Tamika Mallory. Mallory, she um, is a big fan of Louis Farrakhan, into the black stuff and all that. And they disrupt the Democratic debate and get arrested and stuff like that. So they've been pushing nonstop. This is part of the Black Lives Matter nonsense, where they were saying. I can't breathe, police officers are murderers, and stupid stuff like that. Pantaleo has not been fired to this point, but he was, you know, investigated and stuff like that. But now this judge is planning on firing them, and as I, as I read the article in, in CNN, it appears that he might be getting fired or something. We'll see. But it's, it's uh, a shame that there's such kiss-up, and the wife, the widow, of this man, Eric Garner, is all talking about how Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, because he was running for president, supposedly, (laughs) uh, she's like, they're just passing the buck. But she's the one passing the buck, because her husband is the one who resisted arrest and got himself killed. If you're in that bad of shape, you don't put yourself in that situation. First of all, you don't put yourself in that position, period. If you know that, even if the cops are harassing you, you don't, you don't uh, aggravate them by saying, no, this ends now. What are you talking about? So he was, he messed up and he got himself killed. And then his daughter, interestingly enough, also died two years later, three years later, it's 2017, of a heart attack. She was in her 20s or early 30s or something. Erica Garner. And she supported the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's a real shame that there's nobody really telling the truth. That this man brought what happened pretty much on himself. And the liberals are just want to attack the police over it. And kiss up to the black anger. Which is wrong. It's not good for the blacks. It's not good for the community or anything. It's a lack of men. Right? And Trump tells the truth about stuff like this. I don't know if he talked about this one, but it's a shame. It's nasty. Anyways, let me get to some callers, and then I want to talk about some other things. Fake Christianity. There's some people attacking, there's this cardinal 
of DC, newly, uh, a newly installed Catholic archbishop, who's critic he's black, by the way, criticizing the Trump for diminishing our national life by telling the truth about Baltimore and other places, and these Democrat congresswomen of color who hate the country. But somehow he's diminishing our national life. By, by pointing to the poor life situation of Baltimore for so many residents there. Anyways, Chris from Arizona. Chris, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Fine. Nice to hear from you. Happy Men's History Month. <laughs> Happy Men's History Month. Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and a special shout out to our coachy sheriff, Mark Daniels, who went to Washington, D.C. Um, at the end of July. Cochise County, huh? Sheriff? Cochise County, Arizona. Nice. And so he met with who? Trump? Uh, he met with Congress, I believe. Okay. Um, he is the chairman of the NSA Border Security Committee. Yeah, that's d- southeastern Arizona, something like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been, I've been in that area, and it seemed to be getting worse and worse every year. 15 uh-huh. years ago. And there were signs... How long ago? 15 years ago or more. Okay. Yeah, I went down there for like natural history class for college and we were catching, you know, snakes and toads and frog So you frog, went to the river. Frogs. You went to the San Pedro. Probably we we went all over the area. Um we were in the mountains. There were monsoons. It was monsoon season because it was middle of summer or so. Awesome. The it was cool. Go. But there were like Illegals, there was, we saw La Migra drive up and try to go after some illegals. <laughs> it was interesting. And there's signs there where you're not even supposed to go because of the That's illegals right. crossing. In America, there's places where you're not, where there are signs that say, do not come here, it's not safe because of the illegals crossing. That's crazy. Yep, that's right. Yeah. They're encroaching on our country. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so he's involved in that, in the immigration thing? Oh, yeah. He, he's um, encouraging us. Uh, the Bisbee Observer, in yesterday's article of the Bisbee Observer, he's encouraging us to get a hold of our congressman yeah. and say, we need the wall. That's nice. We need more, we need more um, agents, of everything. Yeah. He, he's, he's encouraging us to promote the wall and, and, uh, and a list of other things. Right. Yeah, this stuff has gone on for, like, ri- a ridiculous amount of time. And so they just pretend that it's not a national emergency when it obviously is. And it's worse than ever. It's crazy. It is. Yeah. Th- there's a million. I think this year there's a million of cases waiting to go to court. Yeah. Of illegals that they... they <laughs> and only one... They're, they're, the Bisbee Observer claims, or in this particular article, claims that one out of ten actually need asylum but i i think that is a little bit high yeah i think so too and probably one out of ten or less get deported and those are the ones that are caught there's a whole bunch more probably just as many who are not caught correct yeah oh and uh my sister wanted me to tell you she works for uh ah shucks she doesn't want me to say where she's worried about getting uh losing her job yeah so that's why I'm calling on her behalf. She says, "Okay, um, I wasn't worried about losing my. If I wasn't worried about losing my job, I would be calling." Okay, and then that's a, a quote. Uh huh. And um, the other thing I wanted to but but that's talk about you, uh, re- regarding uh, what though? Was there what? any regarding, was there any point that she wanted to get across? Oh, she wanted me to. Um, she wants to talk about the illegals. She oh, okay. works for um, one of the agencies that yeah. transport. I got you. I, ca- I called last week. If you if you go on um, Jesse's show from last week, okay, you know you would know yeah. what I'm talking about. All Sorry right. that, but um, she told me that okay, weeks ago when we were talking on the phone, she told me about the children that are being used. To come over the border, yeah. And you, because you mentioned it in your news report, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my gosh, got to call him." Yeah. So I corroborate your story. Yeah. So just to explain to the people, I've mentioned two stories now 
of actually multiple cases of these illegals selling children and using them mainly for Central American men to come across and get, you know, priority status. Because if you come with a child pretending to be, you know, a family, a so-called family, then they give you more mercy. Correct. That's and what I'm they let about. you That's come, what she's come in and stay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and they're, they're using si- those mules too because they're less likely to be patted down and checked. Yeah. So wow. they're carrying drugs on the. They're putting the drugs on the children. Yeah. Man, that is evil. We need to just close the borders. It would be nice. Uh, interesting story. Uh, one guy was in lockup. And this little girl walks into the place where he's locked up because she doesn't know any better. She's only eight years old. Uh-huh. Says, uh, you have my daddy. Why, do you, why did you uh, lock up my daddy? Turns out it's not even his daughter. Wow. She was one of those. Yeah, that's, that's so corrupt. And that's why I always say so-called families when we, when we talk about these so-called family units. I always add the word so-called because I don't believe that a lot of these people are related. And sometimes it takes them getting threatened with a DNA test or something to confess that, okay, no, it's not real. And sometimes they don't confess. Sometimes they are actually go through with these tests and find it out. But the liberals are so trusting of the corrupt lawbreakers and so scrutinizing of every little thing that President Trump does and criticizing stuff that that he's doing that's right. It's crazy. It's so backwards. It is very uh, backward. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say that my sister was telling me, she says that whenever she takes an inmate to the hospital, who's paying the bill? Do you know who's paying the bill? Us. The VA, the Veterans Affairs. What? How does that make Correct. sense? <laughs> it doesn't. She says the veterans have to go through so much red tape to get benefits, and the illegals just get their bills paid. Our soldiers are dying at war. Their money goes to non-Americans. It's disgusting. That's a quote from her because she texted me that. Yeah. The that, other night, that is... And, you know, I'm, not, I'm really not surprised in that they get priority everything. If they wait around and don't ship themselves back, we will ship them back on our dime or ship them anywhere in the country that they want to go. Or, you know, these Catholic charities will pitch in sometimes, too. Unfortunately, we should, right. <laughs> should kick them and off the country, too. the last time I talked to you, you mentioned about false compassion, and I actually, you know, I've been thinking about that quite a bit. Yeah. And you are correct. The, uh, uh, the liberals, whoever, are doing their thing, yeah. They're using the it's false compassion indeed. Yeah. Yeah, they um it's that's why we need men's history month really because we it would be nice if um if women and men started thinking more like men as opposed to thinking like emotional. Th- yes. Pretending yes. that they care about these people because Trump really loves all people it seems like. I haven't seen any I indication so. that he doesn't. He seems to really care first for Americans and then for, you know, the rest of the world. He's decent, decent towards so. everybody. And that's, that's real. And the stuff that he stands for, he stands for what's right. And sometimes I feel that he's a little overly nice at times. But uh, in he general, the stuff that he says, line. yeah, the stuff that he says, he's, he's, um, he's, he's right. <laughs> And they say, oh, it's so terrible. But he's pointing out that these people, like in Baltimore, are suffering. And they're acting oh, yeah. like he's insulting the people of Baltimore. No, they, they agree with him, as you saw in Joel's mashup. That's right, I did. Yeah. Excellent job, Joel. Nice. So cool. that brings me to the, the, the second article in yesterday's Bisbee Observer. This woman, on two, last Tuesday, holds a sign that says, Say no to racism. She was wow. protesting our President Donald Trump. Where is this again? Bisbee, Arizona. Okay. Say no to racism, and she and basically, she says uh, says in quotation marks, it 
oh no, saying no to racism is in quotation marks, um, was her way of telling people how she feels about President Donald Trump. She said, I just felt like this was something I had to do. And who is this again? Uh, this, uh, do you want me to, it's in the Bisbee Observer. But do you this want me woman? To name the person that's holding the sign? Not necessarily, but what, what capacity is she? She's just a, uh, just a, a citizen? She's just a person that lives in Bisbee and she went to the roundabout. I don't yeah. know if you ever visited Bisbee. There's a roundabout that takes you to Douglas and okay. Old Town Bisbee and back That's to crazy. Vista. That's so typical, but it's so it's ridiculous, really. But that's, we have pastors talking like this now. And Catholic leaders yeah. and stuff like that. And even Nancy Pelosi. These people are just, that's why you can't listen to authorities. Because they're not authorities on really anything. I appreciate it, Chris. You're welcome. Take care. Happy, happy again, Men's History Month. Again, happy Men's History Month. And make sure you catch church on Sunday with Jesse Lee Peterson. Definitely. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. See you Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye. Nathan out of Arizona. Nathan, how are you? I'm, I'm, I'm well. <laughs> You're about to say good? What's that? You're about to say good? No. <laughs> All defensive. <laughs> Maybe. <Nice. laughs> um, how you doing? Fine. Thank you. Happy Men's History right. Month, man. Oh, uh, yeah, and you. Um, let's see, I'm working right now, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break and talk with you um, about the order of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Those three words. Yeah. And how to keep, and how it's important to keep those in order, and how it's important to teach your children. To keep those in order when you know life is coming at you, you know. Yeah, you have kids, Nathan. You have children. Yeah. Nice. How? What ages, roughly? We got four, five, and eleven. Okay. Nice. White babies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any so, any more coming? Do you think? Nope. Nope. We're all done. I I, I got my my son and. Uh, and that's it. All that's right, it, man. I I think uh, any any more and uh, yeah, I, I think it's about my. We just well, hell, we we started them in public school uh, this week. So all all three of them. So now I've got some extra free time to make more money to get them back out of school. <laughs> oh, okay. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. So you're yeah. taking the risk with the public school there. And you're working on, on um, putting them into private school or homeschool or something. Yeah, I mean, and so all, you know, all the parents that do have their kids in in uh, public schools that, you know, they could they they can at least try and um, oh supplement, you know, um, by by making sure they understand the order of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom because. When you take those out of order, you know, for example, you put your foot in your mouth. Um, it's a filter, you know, when, uh, and people use it against you by, you know, they'll give you a word, a word of wisdom or they'll give you a sound bite of, of understanding. It sounds good. So you take it in and then you repeat it out because, well, we grow up in compulsory schooling. So we just, work, you know, we're compelled to just vomit it right back out. We're not really thinking. Yeah. You know, not that, not that thinking. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you guys say. Um, uh, aside from, I, I would say the critical, the critical thinking. And I get what you guys are saying as far as making things too, too complicated. You know. Or, yeah. Or be Nathan, man, I don't know if I don't know if you need to teach your kids. Um, about knowledge versus wisdom versus understanding. I think it'll just come naturally if you, you... You can you may have it in mind, but... I don't know if they're into that. I don't think that they would be. They well, like... It's about, it's about due, due diligence. Um, you, regarding you, you what, though? You can't put the cart before the horse, right? 
But what so, are you referring to? Everything. So, like, you, you want to build a house. You want to build a model rocket. You got you to, gotta, you know, lay out the blueprints. You have to see all the data. And that's the knowledge. And you have to, you have to actually work to lay that out. You have to make it the effort, the due diligence to, to know um, what that is so that you understand, you know, the best you can to then proceed with the output, which is the rhetoric, which is uh, the wisdom, you know. Man, um, so I, I think words, that that stuff, actions, I don't think you have to... Keep I don't think you What's have that? to. I don't think you have to name everything that you're doing like that because that just comes naturally. People, it, it people, does come naturally, people do it. People do it naturally that, uh, without. Hold on, hold on. People do that naturally without having to analyze it and describe it in that way. That's gonna. That's gonna drive some people nuts because they're not into laying stuff out like that and categorizing everything like that and ha- and describing everything in those in that type of way especially they're kids not used to, kids they're are, not used to doing that because they've been brought up and they're they're basically their their mind is a product of of the society they've been brought up in, no in the i'm talking no 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 curriculum. no that's not true that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about kids kids are normal man and bringing that kind of intellectualism into it is kind of abnormal because they're not gonna, they're just gonna, they're just gonna live and pick up stuff, how to do things naturally. Like, it's kind of, man, it's like if you think about how the mechanics of, of, um, an athlete, how to kick a soccer ball correctly, or, or connect with a, a baseball, or shoot a basket, or catch a football, whatever. All that stuff, you can, yes, you can break it down and describe it intellectually, but, the uh, person with the talent to do that th- stuff doesn't need all that. They just they just naturally do it because they have it in them to know how to do that stuff. You yeah, don't because, have to break it into to all that stuff. Because our brains are naturally designed to yeah. think that way. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's, yeah. I, that's exactly the point. But since we're going into a program that mixes that natural way up... That's the issue. So as a parent, that's the best thing you can do for your kids is to keep it simple yeah. so that when they're barraged with different types of programs and data sets that, you know, <laughs> might have catchy, you know, uh, things to that program that they're attracted to or they're pressured into um, being a part of, they will be able to see quicker because uh, most people will kind of end up buying into the, the bandwagon effect, you know, but because they keep it basic um, in that order, they're not going to jump on to any uh, platform or program until they actually look at and look into it themselves. They're going to be like, Oh, that's interesting. They'll set it aside. Yeah. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to take it in. And, uh, and get all right, Nathan, in, in I got to go, man. World. I gotta go. Take care. All right. All right. All right. Skip, out of Augusta, Georgia. Skip, you've been waiting a while. Appreciate it. Hey, how you doing? Hey, James. I'm good. How you doing? Doing fine. Thank you. Nice to hear from you. Nice to hear from you. I'm nice to talk to you. Did you hear my response about, um, about uh, what's his name? Earl calling me a lackey? Because he was responding well, I, to our I conversation. I missed that this morning. I uh, I was kind of late getting in. I had to go run a friend of mine to the hospital and get fix some medicine up, so I missed it. I'm going to go back and listen to it. I just described how, like, our conversation went down where I said that you were blind because you missed a deeper point that Jesse was making, and you were making a shallower point, and I said that you were blind, and then you said, well, I have to agree with everything Jesse says or else I'm blind, and then I said, yeah. And then, so at that point, he he called because of that. I call he called me a lackey. Well, I'm gonna stay out of that one, James. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Look, I don't really care. Look at here, you did an awesome job last month, going what thirty days without saying anything about the blacks derogatory. Well, it was more. It was more seven days on my show specifically. 
not talking about oh, blacks. Oh, seven days. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, look at here. I was. I told Nick I was going to tell you since you did a good job doing that. I thought it was thirty days. If it was only seven, I know I can do it now. <laughs> um, I'm going to go seven days starting today without saying Jew one time. Anything derogatory about the Jews? or anything in chat, and there's a whole bunch of people that, that watch and keep up, so if All right. I do mess up and say Jew, they'll, uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll let you know. All right. And if, I do, and if I do say Jew one time in seven days, I'll send you $50, James. All right, cool. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice self-discipline to try out. Cool. I appreciate that. Well, Joel inspired me also, uh, He's got a Viking in him, and I've been listening to that, and i got a Viking in me now at least for seven days. Right on. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's, uh, you know, I, I know whites better than I know blacks. I've picked up on how blacks are, like, throughout the course of my life. But um, I definitely, it's, you know, it's all, we all are dealing with the same issues, whether Jews, blacks, whites. But, but it's, it, it is interesting how... Different groups pick up different weaknesses and issues, for sure. But those are like specific, uh, they're more symptoms, but the deeper issue is the same. Well, it's going to be it's gonna be hard for me not to say Jew for seven days. <laughs> I know, you keep but on saying it. I, I think it's, <laughs> what I'm going to have to do is not watch any uh, anything from Hollywood, because that reminds me of Jews. I'm not going to have to think of, I'm, I can't be thinking about the Federal Reserve because that reminds me of the Jews. Man, you, and I can't, you I, have I, it I rough. Think about, I can't think about the 109 countries that keep the <laughs> Jews out. You know, I, I just, I, it's going to be hard, but I can do it for seven days, James. All right. Appreciate it, Skip. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, buddy. All right. Take care. Poor guy, man. All this, all this knowledge, so-called, is, can drive people nuts. And white people get into knowledge. You heard basically the last two calls. Um, Benjamin, first time caller out of Miami, Florida. Benjamin, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing well. How are right. you doing, Mike? I'm doing fine, too. Thank you, man. Hey, um, I had a question about the, the debate, the Democratic debate. I don't know how anybody can watch that, but did you watch it? I did not. I, <laughs> you know, in the first <laughs> debates, I, I tried to you know, postpone our night Jesse Lee Peterson 90s TV show until after the, sh after the fact because, you know, I thought that maybe I would want to watch the debates. I tried to turn it on. I couldn't last, like, 15 minutes without getting bored. Oh, I can't even last five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is. Hey, but, hey, the fun about the Jews, the funny thing is, just like a lot of black people blame the white people. Yeah. I find now that a lot of white people are blaming the Jews. Yeah, it's true. It's weird. It's a real weird thing because it's it's almost the same thing. as you're putting yourself into a victim mentality, and then you just go crazy thinking about Jews all day. Yeah, and you know the trick about it is that catches these white people because they are so intellectual, is they, and I think they may, have more facts that are actually factual, about right. Jews, and they that justifies it in their mind to just delve into it more, and right. the, that's why I say that there's a difference between facts and truth, because Jesus said that I he's the truth, saying. right? And if Jesus is the truth, he was about love, not hate your enemy, and all that, and people mistake what love is, and so people think, oh, that means roll over and let your enemy destroy you. And that's not what it means. But right. there's, there's a whole misconception about Christianity. Because a lot of these guys, some of them are atheists, some of them are pagans, and some of them are Christians. Or they think that they're Christians. And yes, they're right in that there's a whole lot of fake Christianity that's really weak and rolling over for these people who are destroying the country. And they're participating in it. You know, the liberal Christians, the weak, nice uh, Christians. But they're like going to, they're responding in it in a way that's not, still not the correct Christianity. And that's why I really like Jesse's is that get rid of the anger so that you can fight back in the right way and you can tell the truth without the anger and resentment and blame. And you are no longer a victim, 
you see that the evil people are doing the evil people's job, and you're finally able to do your job, as opposed to complaining. And thinking that you're coming up with solutions like war, race war, catalysts, and crazy things like that. Right. And it's I, just... These people what are I like about Jesse really is, like you said, is he keeps everything really simple. Yeah. And and honestly, I haven't even gotten angry, I would say, in a, for about a whole entire year, since July last year. Nice. I literally haven't even gotten angry. What happened in July that... that seems to have helped i don't know i was i was um with i guess what you would call born again i repented for i started thinking about all the things i did i thought i was a good person Uh uh-huh and then i realized i have anger towards some people i'm kind of judging other people yeah and I, i repented for that and then i woke up the next day with a refreshed mind i just felt brand new right on and and I've been watching Jesse already for maybe a year and a half, two years. And and it's like you said, I, I went up to my parents. After this happened, after that happened, I repented. I went to my parents. I forgave them for having resentment towards them because they babied me and whatnot. Yeah. And just like that, once I did that, I almost I felt like I was me again. I felt like I had my own thoughts again. That is cool. Yeah, it was really amazing. And, and you know, I've I've heard similar stories like this, and it's kind of like you can tell when it's when the person is real or not too, because they describe it in a unique way. That's the right. same, but it's their you know, it's you can tell it's like their words or something, for lack of a better word. Right. And uh, I mean, that's it's, cool. hard, that's it's a really nice hard to describe it, but it's just I feel I feel like a complete piece. And I literally haven't even gotten angry in a year, even though I wasn't really an angry person. Yeah. You know, literally nothing has been able to get me angry. Okay, I, cool. I, yeah, it, it's amazing, man. And I like what you guys are doing. You guys are doing a good thing. This is like a revival of men. That's nice. That's right. That's right. I believe it. I believe it. I think things are going to be looking up. Yeah, I think so too, because it really doesn't take that many people are you know uh, speaking of these people that are blaming the jews a lot of the alt-right are disheartened and freaking out because and i understand it because whites are becoming a minority and they're not having enough babies we're bringing in all kinds of immigrants and those immigrants are having babies and we're being replaced basically by people that are anti-white and anti-america anti-christian and that that yes because numbers do matter in terms of votes but numbers can change pretty quickly i think if there is an awakening of the few that is really genuine and you seem like a genuine guy jesse does trump does and there's a lot of guys that we've witnessed on jesse's radio show and in church with jesse lee peterson and a lot of people watch the fallen state and that really awakens something in them and they and it and it make somebody that's genuine is very powerful right yeah that's very and true. influential i agree with you on that never mind all that social media presence and you know all the all the censorship going on all they can do is mm-hmm. affect the physical but this, there's like a spiritual power in realness that yes. like like trump tweeted truth is a force of nature and yes, it's very true. and it's more than just facts. <laughs> it's real truth. It's and it's nice. That's yep, that's I cool, agree. Benjamin. Happy Men's History Month to you. That's right. Happy Men's History, <laughs> History Month, man. All, All right. right. Yeah, Any- man. Um, I think I think there's men standing up. Yeah. And I think we're gonna turn it around because it's like you said. It it takes. That the individual, for example, if you have 10 kids, if I have 10 kids, you know, I was born in Germany. Okay. And my mom has been here 30 years and she's still, she's still not able to vote. Okay. You know, so you imagine that somebody who's been here 30 years isn't able to vote, but these people, they come in and they're, they're voting. It makes no sense. Yep. And they have anchor babies that 18 years later they vote 
or less, and they want to lower the age to 16. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. The, the only way I think that anybody could vote for the Democrats literally is if you're a teenager and you just don't know, you have no life experience. Yeah. I think you're right. Then, right? Then they can trick you. But I don't see how any adult can believe anything they say. I, unless you, I guess since when you're in a fallen state, yep. you just can't see the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's why... Um, and we all suffer from some type of fallen stateness and blindness, even even if absolutely. many of us were never liberals. You know, a lot of us, oh, a lot of us were raised Christians and conservatives, and there's no there's no looking down on people over their blindness, but but they sure are blind. It's crazy. That's true. It's just <laughs> like Jesse said. He says, "Oh, how can you be angry at somebody else when you yourself, when you were in a fallen state, were doing similar things?" Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's a great point, because yeah. if you just think about that, you think, oh, they can't help themselves. They may even think that they're doing, that they're good, you know? Yeah, we all got our issues, man. That's exactly. cool, Benjamin. Like, I, what, one, let me just make one point. I was pushing the, the marijuana. I, I fell into the lie that it was good okay. and it was beneficial and all that. Yeah. And the day after I woke up, I went to go light them up, and <laughs> something inside of me just, told me, not verbally, but it's something just inside me just said, just don't do it. And uh, I laid it down, and this was a year ago, and I never even think about it. And I haven't picked it up, and I was a daily smoker. Wow, that is nice. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. I mean, yeah, because you know, everybody was like, well, you quit smoking? I'm like, yeah, because I was <laughs> literally pushing it to my parents and everybody, Man. everybody around me. Yeah. You know, so I was in the fallen state, and and it's crazy, you know, when you, when you think that you, you say, I was also an intellectual, you think that you know all these things, but yeah. it's really just, it puffs you up, the pride, you know, you think you're better than people and smarter. Right. Yep. And, oh, life is simple, man. That's what I really like about Jesse's show. He keeps everything simple and just like you do. You keep everything simple and you speak the truth. You're not afraid to speak your mind. And that's what that's what it's about. We should be able to speak our mind and and debate one another if we have different ideas, you know. Yeah. There shouldn't be any any anger. That's cool, Benjamin. I appreciate that. Very good points. And Absolutely. congratulations on quitting pot. That's cool. Yeah, man. It was it's unbelievable. <laughs> everybody who sees me, they're like, "You quit?" Because I was literally <laughs> pushing it to everybody. Right. I'm like, you. It's it's the healing plant, this and that. I fell into all the lies. But, but in reality, you were just getting high. <laughs> yeah, I was docile. I was very yeah. docile. I was very docile. Let's just put it like that. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's been amazing, man. I love you guys' show. It's pretty much the only thing I watch now on YouTube. I watch you guys since you're on three, four hours a day. Yeah. You know, I work from five in the morning to like eleven, sometimes twelve in the morning, twelve noon. So I miss Jesse now, but I come in, I come home in time for the end of your show. So nice. I was like, let me call in one time. Let me see if I can get through. Right on. Appreciate that, Benjamin. Take Appreciate care, man. Hate, man. See you, at church, see you in up. church, hopefully, if you can. Absolutely. If I'm in L.A. ever, I'll definitely check you guys out. All right. Cool. Take care. All right. Hey, All you right. have a good day. You as well. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Austin, out of Virginia. First time caller. Austin, man, hey. how are you? How you doing, man? Doing fine. Um, yeah, I just wanted to call. I've never called in before, but um, I'm a big fan of your work. Cool. Big fan of Jesse's work. Um, love what y'all do. It's amazing. Um, but I was listening to what you're saying about. I guess the NYPD is talking about firing that cop. Yeah, former op- well officer Daniel Pantaleo. Who supposedly put right. Eric Garner in a chokehold, and Eric Garner died after that. Yeah. Yeah. So, the one thing that I know everyone's like trying to figure out if the chokehold is illegal and right. if the cop, you know, if he's allowed to do that to someone. And my thing is, is that why is this even being enforced like this? Why is what like being enforced? Cigarette seems so trivial. Yeah. You know, what's, what's, to me, yeah, selling loose cigarettes, 
that seems to be, and I don't even think that he was doing that at the time, but he was, he had been, had run-ins with the cops over doing that in the past, I guess. But uh. the situation is, like, over in New York City, they raise the taxes on cigarettes for various reasons, partly because, you know, it's bad for you or whatever, and right. partly because they want to raise money for whatever else. They like to blow money, right? And so they yeah, raise taxes liberal, on man. it. And so, like, legitimate stores who are pay tax-paying stores have to pay those taxes, so the customer has to pay through the nose to get any cigarettes. And selling loose cigarettes, you can, you know, you, you avoid taxes, and you don't, you know, it's just... It's a nice little racket for a guy, I guess. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, they and, kind of created their own black market for cigarettes. I'm here in VA, Virginia, yeah. and we have Philip Morris here. Okay. You know, it's very common for people from up north when they come down here, they buy cartons. You know? Right, yep. Um, because they're so cheap. And it's just crazy to me to hear that story talking about him selling Lucy's because... I mean, it's a daily thing here. I mean, you yeah. go to a bar, you go to a show, you go to a gas station, you got homeless people coming up to you. I got 25 cents. Yeah. Can I get a smoke? Like, it's super common, and no cop, no cop would waste their time. Like, you know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, part, it's partly, yeah, you can, you can blame the politicians, and I don't, to be honest, I don't know what, is involved in all that how what whether it's a misdemeanor or what but right. you can you can touch on like the politicians like they shouldn't be taxing it like this and they shouldn't be it shouldn't be such an issue but it is like he was reportedly selling them right outside of a person's store who sells cigarettes so undercutting right. the legitimate business but so it wasn't like he was outside a bar or somewhere that doesn't have them and somebody may be wanting them and then the other thing is this, and this is really the elephant in the room, is why are, is nobody calling out these blacks like Eric Garner for escalating with the police over such a trivial issue? If they wanted to take them in, okay, let them take them in. And, and if, it's, if it's unfair, deal with that later. But don't escalate the situation to the point where you're jerking your hand away when he's grabbing your hand to arrest you. And that's resisting I mean, arrest, and he, yeah. so, these blacks are escalating it. And then they, they claim, oh, he was killed over selling cigarettes, when he wasn't even selling cigarettes. No, he was killed because he was out of shape, and he resisted arrest and put, got himself into an escalated situation, because blacks tend to escalate the situation unnecessarily. But they don't want to point that out, and they want to make excuses for that. And that's, yeah. that's the bigger issue in my mind. I don't think, honestly, I don't think the cops, I mean, unless they can prove that that, that chokehold is actually illegal, like that he's not supposed to do that. And it's not even illegal, it's just against the police policy, so if they want to yeah, fire him for that, they should have done it right away, but they didn't because, you know, look at the situation, he resisted arrest, big guy, you gotta take him down somehow, how else are you gonna do it? And I think my problem is just the fact that they even engaged over it. And that's not really even the cop's fault. Yeah. He's following the law. Right. The law in New York is that, you know, I guess you can get arrested for this. I don't know if he was trying to arrest him. And it, and it seemed like they knew him and he knew them and they had a history. And so he may have been suspected of other things. He had been, he'd, he was known to be a drug dealer, not a very successful one. And so right. who knows what was going on, but, but the, whether they were right or wrong to engage, there's no question that he was wrong and he brought it on himself by, by escalating, yeah. by resisting. Just, I would never live there. <laughs> yeah. If their cops are like that over Lucy's, I would never live there. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what's next? I mean, you got California. Yeah. Didn't they just outlaw plastic straws? Kind of, yeah. Like, I mean, you you have to. You're supposed to ask for them, but you know. Oh wow! Well, <laughs> I mean, before you know it, they'll be putting people in chokeholds too. Yeah, over carrying plastic bags. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny. All this you know, the plastic straws and plastic bags. The point is, uh, to my knowledge, that it's 
it's because of all the litter problem. The litter problem is, as Tucker Carlson says, an immigrant problem. It's not the uh, it's not the normal people, you know, the the whites or whatever, or the the up the upstanding people that throw away their trash in the right place. It's the people that are littering all the time. Those are the ones causing the environmental problems, so called. It's usually homeless people. Yeah. And they're not yeah. doing anything about the homeless crisis. They're pouring nope. money into it. They but send them off to other places. Yeah, they reward homelessness. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. It was, it was good talking to you. That was the only thing I wanted to talk about. But yeah, you make a good point think, about these crazy laws that yeah, it just seems police like have overreach. to abide it just by. It seems too. overblown. Like, why, why, are, why are the police even worried about that kind of thing? I'm yeah, sure there's a lot bigger crimes going on in New York, you know? Yeah, but they need to do this broken windows policing because there is such a thing as like high crime areas. And if you do, right. if you crack down on the small stuff, that also has a diminishing effect on the bigger stuff, which is yeah, I guess be like nice. jaywalking or something. <laughs> yeah, if you do that stuff, then <laughs> then uh, it kind of it kind of has an effect on especially the low class cl- the low class crimes of the violent, you know, the gang activity the drug dealing, the murders, the th- thefts, and all that stuff. It really has an effect. Yeah. It's kind of like n- not taking, not putting up with any mess. Uh, a strict boss can have the effect of whipping a person into shape so that they actually do what they're supposed to do. Military discipline, same thing. And that's kind of what yeah. you have to do when people don't have, don't follow the law of their hearts as Jesse describes it, and the Bible describes it where they need the outside law to, like, enforce a discipline. Kind of like when somebody breaks the law in some way and then they have to go on a probation. Then they have to follow really strict rules, and it's like, oh, why do I have to deal with this? But they... that's part of the discipline. (laughs) People need an exterior source. Yeah, I I just wish that... You know, it's sad what happened. I mean, it is sad that that guy died, and... You know, what's telling, too, is that the, his, his daughter died, too, of the same thing that he died of, basically. A heart attack. Really? Yeah, his daughter oh, died wow. at a young age, too. She was a young mother. I don't know if she was married, but she was a young mother. Died. And she had joined yeah. the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm not, I don't really see it as a sad thing. It's... He brought it on himself, and we can't be... We can't be emotional about it. I don't. Uh, he like seemed how like he was a nice Black guy. He was, matter, he was. He was. He was. They made it an emotional thing. Like yeah. They made it a. They politicized it. That's what they did. Yep. So they I don't. I don't go for that. Death. I don't agree with what happened really, but I don't like that Black Lives Matter basically took that man's death. Yep. And, and then the, said, "This is our cause." Like, I mean, I don't agree with what happened, but I don't think that's like. I don't think that. You should put all that on the entire police force or anything like that. It's stupid. Yes, and the scum of the earth are the ones pushing this thing now. Like, if you take a look at those, the three more well-known public figures, Al Sharpton's National Action Network, Women's March, females, they're the scum of the earth. And I wouldn't side with them at all. And so, yeah. Me neither. All right, Austin. Me neither. <laughs> Good to hear from you, man. Happy Men's History Month to you. Yeah, Happy Men's History Month, dude. All right, take care. Peace. Alex, first time caller out of San Antonio. How are you? I'm well. Um, I've called you a few times before, James. Oh, okay. First time caller. All right. Sorry about that. Um, oh, no worries. But hey, listen to this. I realized something. There's no such thing as poor people or middle class people or rich people. And yeah. Democrats make this up to get people to vote for them. Yeah, that's a communist term. With the uh, the Occupy Wall Street stuff that came out in, what was that, 2011? All that mess where they were, they were like, we are the 99% against the 1%. And so they were demonizing the 1%, the, rich, the top 1% most rich people. I agree with you. I don't like the term middle class. It doesn't seem like... A legitimate term. It seems like a communist or socialist type of term to divide and conquer. I it is tend to agree with you. I mean, it, when you're a kid, I'm sure you remember, but or I don't know if you do, but I know I remember that 
I never knew what poor or rich was, yeah. what middle class was. It was only after I started really getting in, like, to the, towards the end of high school. Right. Where uh, the liberal talk started to kind of resonate with me. Uh, and that's when I started using those words. But I noticed even everybody uses them, even the left. I mean, the left got the right to use them, too, now. Yeah, it's a shame that they've fallen for that. And they've the right have fallen for the racism thing and sexism thing. The right is left, really. Most, most of the right, I would say. Right, yeah, most I of the agree, right is yeah. wrong. All and, of the uh, left is wrong. <laughs> hopefully the changes, but that's all I wanted to say, really. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's a good point, and it's something to pay attention to as well. Because yeah, look at Trump. He's, he's a man of the people. He loves working people. He loves the less educated people. <laughs> and he loves everybody. <laughs> the poorly educated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, it's, and it's basically, it's about right versus wrong. It's not about class and what's best for such and such class. It's about what's right. And that's, and then what's, what's good for you, you got to take care of yourself. You can't be looking to the government to take care of that part. But, yeah, the liberals, uh, liberals think they can read minds. They think they're God. They, yeah. they can look at this rich person and say, oh, he's rich because he exploited people. He's he's evil at heart. Yeah. Or, oh, he's only poor because he was exploited. He didn't do anything to get there. It's the system's <laughs> fault. Yeah. We have systematic racism. Yeah, it's so crazy. They're dumb. I agree. I appreciate that, Alex. Very nice points. Yep, I appreciate you, James. Happy Men's History Month. Thank you. Same to you. Take care. Bye. Michael, first time caller out of California. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Uh, nice to talk to you, Hank. La, la, la. <laughs> right on. Huh? I can't wait for Joel's uh, new show, if he, get, if he makes a new show. It would be the Joel Report, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. blah. <laughs> <laughs> the Friday Report. No. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm really happy for all of your success. Happy Men's History Month. Thank you. Uh, I know you don't have so much time, but, um, yeah, the Eric Garner case, I had a good conversation back and forth in chat with uh, Marcus Jones. Okay, uh, nice. My chat li uh, line is 510-Ralph-Wiggum. Okay. But, uh, yeah, just it's a false sense of sorrow. Yeah. The Democrats are using Eric Garner as a martyr, the, the false narrative of Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Hands up, don't shoot was a lie. Yep. And then I don't believe that Eric Garner was being a very good father. He, you know, didn't cheat, uh, raise his children to be healthy, to live a healthy life, to live this sorrowful way of eternally being a victim. Yeah. And uh, I know I don't have too much time, so I'll kind of try to move on with that. But Bill de Blasio is saying that this cop should be demonized for doing his job. Like, I have aspirations of working in the public sector and to try and get bad people off the streets myself, hopefully someday. And uh, I sympathize with uh, peace officers because it's such a difficult job to do and it's a thankless position. Yeah. And really, um, my other point that I wanted to bring up, because um, I know that Jesse is kind of somewhat rigid in his philosophy of forgiving their parents, but mm -hmm. um, full disclosure, I've actually lost both of my parents at a young age. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I found Jesse only in the last, you know, year or two, but um, what would you recommend regarding if I couldn't forgive my parents? And um, I kind of want to come down to church someday and be with you guys, but I just want to let you guys know that you guys are doing a great job. I appreciate and that. And I, I really enjoy your guys' program. And just uh, I'll leave you at, with that. What would you recommend for someone in my position who's already without? I would recommend doing what Jesse recommends, which I've heard him say a lot of times, is is do the silent prayer and right. get to know yourself and the ways that you know you're kind of out of control and yep. realize that that's how your parents were and yep. um from there you can you can forgive them without without facing them since it's no longer possible to face them if they were alive right. that, you would, would do that advice. to get your courage back and then just start to um speaking up and facing other people and not being afraid and not being angry and he does have a um, playlist Jesse Lee Peterson has a playlist on his YouTube channel you scroll down you should see under like forgive or something like that drop your anger there's a right. section called how to forgive 
you know, someone who died or a parent who died or something like that. And how to forgive dead parents or someone else who's died. And there's, you know, there's a few videos of other people who've, who are in that situation. Wonderful. That helps yeah. me. And then I know that I, really quick, it's just funny because uh, there's so many things that it's just that, uh, again, talk about Tyler Wingate from Berkeley near Detroit, you know, White Lives Matter and uh, <laughs> Happy Men's History Month. And all right. uh, just, again, congratulations on all you're doing, Take, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are on the air. And, uh, yeah, uh, bless you guys. All right, cool. Take care, Michael. All right, thanks, James. All right. That about wraps up the show, but let me quickly just touch on this Drudge reported. This D.C.'s new Catholic Archbishop slams the president for diminishing our national life. I mentioned that this at the top. Sounds like a liberal, just rolling my eyes. He's the first black guy. Uh, well, he's the country's lone black archbishop. On Thursday, issued his first public statement since his installation, lambasting President Donald Trump's recent tweets about members of Congress of color as diminishing our national life. And he mentioned uh, Wilton Gregory, who came to Washington in May, is known for being non-confrontational, but now he feels that he has to. It's just this fake Christianity. Um, you can read the article. It's linked from Drudge to LMT Online, and it has a Washington Post article reposted there. It's just lists off a whole bunch of propaganda about these liberal fake Christians who are attacking Trump for telling the truth, really. And they have that fa- false compassion as, to re- as opposed to real love. So, in the, mean- in the meantime, or regardless, go check out Church with Jesse Lee Peterson. We put out one show yesterday on, uh, from Sunday 2008. Very nice. About dishonest politicians, about the economic crisis. Hopefully Trump comes through for us. I think he, I think he will. And then, um, oh yeah, Jesse interviewed a woman, Reverend Doctor. You know that's fake when they say Reverend Doctor. Dolores Carpenter. Check that out. It's on the Jesse Lee Peterson channel. Anyways, guys, I'll see you Sunday, 9 a.m. My cha- on my channel, on the Hake channels, thehakereport.com. And of course, church on Sunday, rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Take care, guys.